G'day mate, welcome to our Komodo Dragon Centre here at the Australian Reptile Park. Construction has just begun on our brand new Komodo nest box for 2025. Kraken, our big male lizard, is about to breed with Daenerys, our little female, and they've already had hatchling Komodos in the past. So we're gonna go for a second time here at the Reptile Park and hopefully get a couple of eggs out of them this season. What we're doing right now is we're renovating the old nest box. Come and have a look. We're actually filling it up right now, three metres deep in sand or soil. So the Komodos have to dig right down deep into the ground to be able to deposit their eggs. And so we're trying to replicate that right now. We've got Billy on the excavator and we're filling it up. So the boys have already laid heat cord down the bottom here. We've got heat cord running through that floor and um, we want that floor to sit about 27 to 28 degrees, replicating that burrow that they create out in the wild. They burrow down uh, into the sides of mounds or they just take a megapode bird nest and dig straight through that. But there's already a nice temperature to that soil. It's really uh, high humidity and very, very warm. So we want the soil to be about 28 degrees. So that cord's in the ground. And now what we're doing is we're fitting structure around it. So when they naturally dig in the wild, they're digging into mounds that have got tree roots and they've got all sorts of rocks and things that hold that together nice and well. She'll come in, she'll chamber down a couple of meters. This is actually a three meter box and she'll chamber right down to where these logs are. And hopefully if we put them right, will promote a nice spot in the fork of a tree uh, to actually get down, dig, make a little chamber and deposit those eggs and they'll feel nice and safe and also heated from underneath because where we are on the central coast in New South Wales is a lot colder than up in the Lesser Sunda Islands of Indonesia. So once the nest box was finished and complete, ready to go, and we knew Daenerys was showing all the signs, we introduced both Komodos to each other. So we just put Kraken with Daenerys, obviously, on Kraken's side. And this is what we want to see. They've immediately gone into courtship behaviour. So as, as soon as they got in here, they went into ritualised combat where she actually tried to fight him. And they stood up like big dragons on Komodo and started wrestling each other. He won. And now he's got the confidence that he's got his girl and he's going to do a whole lot of courting from here. What he's trying to signal to her is that he's a big dominant lizard and he's ready to mate and trying to get her receptive to that. She's submissive, she's not fighting back, but receptivity is a little bit different. He needs her to sit still, raise that tail, and allow him to start mating. So look at him right now, he's actually using his back legs to claw up the base of her tail, and she should lift. He'll wind his tail under. Once we get Komodo's mating, they will do this for hours, every single day. This is as exciting as it gets when you're a Komodo keeper. It does not get any better than when you're trying to get little baby Komodos from these two. They are the best. They're the first lizards that have ever bred here in Australia, um, as far as Komodos go, and uh, they're really good at it. So hopefully uh, this leads to mating, but very, very interesting from them. He's, he's rubbing his scent all over her, and he's picking up odours and pheromones that she's giving off from around her legs but also right here at the head. And so this could go on for many hours. Our first pairing, we saw a lot of courtship and no copulation. And so we separated from there and the next morning, you wouldn't believe what happened. Holy hell, that's really interesting. We've put them in together and took no time at all for him to come over. All he did was posture. He showed her his back and his neck and he's already gone straight into courtship and hasn't mucked around whatsoever. They are professionals, they've done this before, so we were hoping that's the way it was gonna be. All he's gotta do now, you can see he's really in the mode for, for mating because he's moving his head around. That's monitors do that, all go in, including our lace monitors out in the pit. They'll shake their head around when they're highly stimulated. He does a lot of tongue flicking. He's gonna actually be tongue flicking all over her glands. So behind the front legs and the back legs around her neck region in particular, she's letting out pheromones that we can't detect, but that forked tongue, biggest in the world, designed to pick up chemical stimuli draw it back into the roof of the mouth. There's an opening there, the Jacobson's organ, that is doing chemical signaling with the brain. And it's telling him everything about the receptivity of this girl. So he knows whether she's ready to mate or not. She's actually shown no aggression at all. In fact, I'd say not just submissive, but a very receptive female right now. 
Okay, so let's just go in. They've been at it for quite a while now, like a couple of hours. So Dill and I are just gonna go suss out, see if we've got a confirmed lock up as far as their tails are wrapped, but we wanna see if the hemipemp's actually in there. And like, from what we've experienced with Komodos mating in the past, they kind of almost go into a trance, don't they? Where they're just completely uh, focused on what they're doing. So we'll go quiet nonetheless and just see, but they should let us go right up to them. So let's go have a look, see what we can see. Nice and quiet. Yeah, so they're not actually locked up at the moment. Doesn't mean they weren't before, um, but you can see there's a little bit of separation there. So usually he'll, she'll have her tail really wrapped up and the cloacas are pressed. Um, and you can see a little bit of the hemipeme going in there, but there's a little bit of a gap at the moment. So yeah, we'll just leave them with it. But I'd say initially they were locked up and now they're just resting for a little bit. And as far as her gestation goes, we've got 35 days from whenever she copulated and had a successful copulation to expect those eggs. For, so from today, I expect that we're all gonna be on high watch of that nest box. We've got two cameras in there to monitor her digging and uh, her behavior to see when she lays, but more importantly, where she lays, so that we can get in there and successfully get them out without disturbing them too much or causing damage to the eggs. Okay, well, let's leave them to it. Good boy. We continue to put them together with no confirmed sighting of copulation. However, Denuse was digging the heck out of a nest box, which is a really great sign. And then finally put them together and we got to see the moment happen. Well, so I've just heard from Dylan's radioed us and we've got a confirmed lock up with our Komodo dragon. So we've seen a lot of cording and a lot of tail wrapping, but now it sounds like they're actually joined up. So we should be getting baby dragons. Let's go check in on them. I'm gonna go nice and quiet. It's just through here. Oh, they're right here. Hey mate, dragons are mating. It's actually happened. Oh, congratulations. That's so exciting. So what happened? What was the trigger? Well, you know, Kraken's head was a lot more twitchy than he was yesterday. And he's coming in going over and as soon as she lifted that tail up, both aligned and uh, I actually saw it go in. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so we've obviously explained that it's in there. Um, they've got two. So he's got one on this side, a hemipeme, and it, it's gone in. And so that's obviously what we're after. We don't just want the courtship. And it, there's a whole lot of behavior from these lizards that actually looks like mating, which isn't. It's a lot of tail wrapping, but right now they are locked up. And so we've needed that. And that will go on for hours and he'll switch sides. So hopefully we have fertilization because got 35 days for the eggs to develop inside of Daenerys. We're actually upping her food right now, so we're giving her a lot more quails and, and things that have a lot of bones in them uh, to help her produce those eggs inside of that body because she's going to have the biggest eggs of any lizard on earth. And so um, it takes a lot of energy for her to do that. She's a reptile, she's an ectotherm, so she heats up and cools down with the environment. We've actually put a whole bunch of sand and soil, we've backfilled that uh, nest box even more than when we last saw it, uh, just so she's got even more digging and she's been chambering down. So she's made a little tunnel down to the bottom, right where the heat pad is at the bottom, and she's got a chamber down there, and that'll be where she puts those eggs in a month's time. How exciting is this? She actually starts shaking when they when they actually lock up. So we've been waiting for that and Kraken has finally done it, which is really, really good. Oh, very exciting. We better leave them to it. And I'll tell you what, 35 days for eggs, another nine months for baby dragons after that. Um, so hopefully we've got those in the hands very, very shortly. How exciting. Oh, he's not finished yet. We'll leave you to it, mate. <laughs> How good. So now with a confirmed copulation, it's time for us to play the waiting game and see if Daenerys is going to lay those eggs. Stay tuned for updates on how she's going.